In this video, we're going to go over the Arrhenius equation, where k, or the rate constant k, is equal to a times e raised to the negative ea divided by rt. So what do these variables mean? a is the frequency factor. a is equal to z times p, where z is the collision frequency and p is the uh, steric factor. But for the most part, for a typical chemical kinetics question, you really don't have to worry about a or z or p. Ea is the activation energy. That's how much energy you need to get the reaction started. We're going to talk a lot about that. Now r is the energy constant and it's equal to 8.3145 and the units are joules per mole per Kelvin. So therefore temperature is measured in Kelvin. You don't want to plug in the Celsius temperature in this equation. The activation energy has the units joules per mole. It has to match with the units of R. Now we need to understand the relationship between temperature and, and K and activation energy. But before we do that, you need to know how K plays a role in the rate law expression. Let's say if we have this rate law expression, rate is equal to K times A. Is this a first order reaction, second order, or is it a zero order reaction? What would you say? Now, the exponent of A is 1, so it's a first order reaction, which means that if you double the concentration of reactant A, the rate of the reaction will double. If you quadruple the concentration of A, the rate will quadruple. So anytime you increase the concentration of a reactant, if it's first order or second order, the rate will increase. Now, if it's a zero order reaction, if you increase the concentration of that reactant, the rate will not increase if it's zero order. Because let's say if you doubled it, 2 to the 0 power is 1. Now, if you double or if you increase the rate constant K, what's going to happen to the rate of the reaction? Will it increase or decrease? If you increase the rate constant K, the rate of the reaction will go up. Now, as we mentioned from the Arrhenius equation, K depends on the activation energy, which is Ea, and it depends on the temperature. So if you can increase the temperature, the rate constant K will go up. However, if you decrease the activation energy, the rate constant K will also go up. Now typically, when you increase the numerator, the value of the whole fraction goes up. But since it's on the exponent and since there's a negative sign, it's kind of opposite to that usual trend. So it turns out when you decrease the activation energy, the rate of the reaction goes up because K goes up. Now let's draw a potential energy diagram. So here we have the reactants, the products, and this is the transition state, also known as the activated complex. The activation energy, or at least the forward activation energy, is the difference between the energy of the reactants and the activated complex. The reverse activation energy is the difference between the activated complex and the energy of the products. Delta H, the enthalpy of the reaction, is the products minus the reactants. Now what's going to happen if we add a catalyst to this uh, reaction? What would a catalyst do? Now you know a catalyst speeds up a reaction, but how exactly does it do that? Well, what a catalyst does, it lowers the activation energy. And it does so by providing the reaction an alternative pathway, another way to get to the products. And so that's how it lowers the activation energy. By the way, that reaction, is it exothermic or endothermic? Anytime the products have less energy than the reactants, they're low in energy, it's an exothermic reaction. Now, anytime you add a catalyst, the activation energy decreases. When the activation energy decreases, the rate constant K goes up. 
And whenever K goes up, the rate of the reaction goes up as well. When you increase the temperature, the rate constant K goes up. And therefore, the rate of the reaction will go up as well. Now, if you increase the concentration of a reactant, if it's first order or second order, and if it's not zero order, then K will stay the same. K is not affected by the concentration. However, the rate will increase if you increase the concentration of the reactant because the rate depends on K and the concentration of A if it's a first or second order reaction. So if you increase the concentration or if you raise the temperature or if you add a catalyst, you can increase the rate of the reaction. So now let's say if we start from this equation, the Arrhenius equation. What we're going to do is we're going to take the natural log of both sides. Starting from this equation, we're going to come up with a few other equations where if you're solving a problem, it might be useful to know those equations. So right now we're going to have the natural log of k is equal to uh, the natural log of a times e raised to the other stuff. Now, a property of natural logs can allow us to separate a single log into two logs. For example, ln a times ln or ln a times b is equal to ln a plus ln b. So this is going to be like a and this is going to be like b. So we're going to separate it into two um, separate natural logs. So on the right side, we're going to have uh, ln a plus ln e raised to the negative e a over rt. Now another property of logs is you're allowed to move the exponent to the front. So this is equal to 2 natural log a. So let's take this exponent and let's move it to the front. So right now we have uh, ln k is equal to ln a and then it's going to be minus e a over rt times ln e. The natural log of e is 1. So that's going to disappear. And I'm going to switch these two. So what we now have is uh, natural log of k is equal to negative ea over rt plus natural log of a. Now I'm going to put this in slope intercept form. So ln k is equal to negative ea over r times 1 over t, which is the same as ea over rt. So this is like y, and this is m x plus b. It's in slope intercept form. So ln k is y. The slope is negative ea over r. m is the slope in the slope intercept form equation. And 1 over t is x, and the y-intercept, which is b, is ln a. So if we were to graph this function, since ln k represents y, we can put that on the y-axis. And 1 over t represents x, so we can put that on the x-axis. And the slope is negative, so it should, we should get a straight line, but going down. And so, therefore, as 1 over t increases, ln k decreases, which means that k decreases. If ln k goes down, k goes down as well. So, if t increases, t is the reciprocal of 1 over t, that means ln k increases, which means k goes up. That's why we can say that as you increase the temperature, the rate constant k goes up, and the rate of the reaction goes up as well. Now, there's some other things to know um, about this equation. And one of those things that you want to know is the slope. We said that the slope, which is m, is equal to uh, negative Ea over r. So if you ever need to find the activation energy, the activation energy is negative r times the slope. So if you can find a slope with this line by doing rise over run, or you know by using the equation 
y2 minus y1 is equal to x2 minus x1? Well, you can calculate the activation energy. But using that equation, we're going to get another equation. So here's what we're going to do. Let's replace m with what it equals, negative ea over r. So negative ea over r is equal to this thing, rise over run. Now y is associated with ln k, so it's going to be ln k2 minus ln k1, which is like y2 minus y1. Now x is associated with 1 over t. So it's going to, x2 is going to be 1 over t2, and x1 is going to be 1 over uh, t1. Now, let's uh, make some space. Now keep in mind, ln a plus ln b was ln a times b. Now it turns out that ln a minus ln b is ln a divided by b. So using that fact, ln k2 minus ln k1 is ln k2 divided by k1. And if we, so we have that and then 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. And if we multiply both sides by r, or negative r, these will cancel. And so the activation energy is equal to negative r times this whole equation. Now you might have seen this equation differently. Perhaps you've seen this equation like this. ln k2 over k1 is equal to negative ea over r times 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. If you rearrange the equation, you can get this equation. This is like the standard form of the Arrhenius equation. Now, if you need to solve for k, here's what you need to do. Let's say if you have ln a equals b. The base of ln is e. e raised to the b is equal to a. So you can change it to this equation. So using that fact, this natural log has a base e. So e raised to everything on the right side is equal to everything inside. So that means that k2 over k1 is equal to e raised to the negative ea over r times 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. And if we multiply both sides by k1, this is how you can solve for the rate constant k2. So k2 is equal to k1 times e raised to the negative ea over r times 1 over t1 minus 1 over t2. And make sure if you want to find the rate constant k, the activation energy must be in joules per mole. Don't plug in kilojoules or you will get the answer wrong. And keep in mind, one kilojoule is a thousand joules. So to go from kilojoules to joules, multiply by a thousand. If you need to go from joules to kilojoules, divide by a thousand. So now you know how to find the rate constant k. And we use the other equation to find the activation energy. So now, sometimes you may need to find the temperature. So let's see if we can rearrange the equation to get the temperature. So let's start with this equation. So in addition to the last form, you also want to remember this form of the equation. So let's multiply both sides by r over ea. So on the left side, we're going to have r ln k2 over k1, and then it's going to be divided by ea. On the right side, well, let's add the negative sign as well, so negative r. So the negative will cancel, r will cancel, and ea will cancel on the right side. So we have 1 over t2 
minus 1 over t1. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this term and move it to this side. So 1 over t1 is negative on the right side, but it's going to be positive on the left side if you add 1 over t1 to both sides. So 1 over t1 minus r ln k2 divided by k1 divided by ea is equal to 1 over t2. So therefore, if we raise both sides to the negative 1, 1 over t2 is going to flip to t2. So here's the other form of the equation. If you need to calculate the temperature, use this. It's going to be 1 over t1 minus r ln k2 divided by k1, which is equal to, well, divided by ea, and then raised to the minus 1. So that's what you need if you need to find the temperature. Let's put all the equations together. And if you need to find the rate constant k, use this equation. It's going to be k1 times e raised to the negative ea over r, and then 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. And in order to find the activation energy, we said that the activation energy is equal to r ln k2 divided by k1. There's a negative sign in front of the r. And it's going to be divided by 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. So now you have the three forms of the equation. So if you need to find the temperature, use the first one. If you need to find the rate constant k, use the second. And if you need to find the activation energy, use the third. And that is it for this video. So thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.